Hello and welcome back to the Desk of Dreams, or in my case, the Desk of Bloody Nightmares, because that's what often ends up on here. Okay, what are we going to talk about in this video? Uh, the excitement, I know you can't wait. He's made something. Nigel's like, yeah, he's made something. He hasn't actually. He has started. So, but what I'm going to do, uh, I have started on the T26, but what I'm going to do is, I film like short segments, but I'm going to put it all together into some more sort of composite video so it makes more sense if you see what I mean so I'm going to get an introduction to various tools and stuff that I use and then a sort of first few stages of me building the hull up and, and then we'll take it from there it's not going to be an exciting epic but it does give an idea about how scratch building works so for those of you who don't mind sort of dry video then yeah you might enjoy it but this video well I've had some things arrive in the post and I took a little bit of action that I should have done ages ago so what I've got is a few things to show you. A review of a couple of items and a quick sort of, hey, do this because it's a great idea. So first off, hey, do this, it's a great idea. What I did, it's under here somewhere. Let me be careful that I don't lose everything else I've got piled up. Oh, that's a bit shiny and it can you see that. Right, okay, this is the Spanish Civil War supplement for Chain of Command, as you can see down there, which is the rules I'm using for my Spanish Civil War stuff. And it's a free PDF that you can download from the uh, Two Fat Lardy site. I've had it for ages and it's sat about on my computer. I did print it off myself and very, very badly and it's sort of thrown together into a folder. But I thought, well, why not spend the money and get a company to print the PDF out for me, put in some covers in a sort of nice lay flat format so I can actually use the damn thing in some games. So that's what I've done. Um, I can't remember the name of the company. I think it was called Docs Print, but I might be wrong. Um, and it cost me 15 quid. It would have been cheaper if I hadn't gone for posh Perspex covers and shiny paper. But I just like the feel of it. And it's nice. So there we go. <laughs> because I'm sad like that. But I should have done it ages, ages ago. And if you're into the idea of using Chain of Command for the Spanish Civil War, then Download the PDF anyway because it's free. Um, what I'll do is I'll pop a link in the description underneath and then you can go to Two Fat Lardy's site and download it yourself and have a look. Because it does give you options for sort of all the army lists and things that you can sort of put together. So when you're trying to put armies together, you can pick a, you know, someone that you like. There's an army that you like, but there's so many different options. Pick an option that you like. There's the word, no. Pick an option that you like. There's there's all sorts of flavours for all sorts of political swathes. Swathes. <laughs> all sorts of political persuasions. There was a sway in there somewhere. I just didn't get the per in front of it. So depending on what you want to be, whether you want to be fascist or commie or Carlist, which is religious -y, kingy, monarchy, monarchy, that's the word. Excuse my brain because it does get lost. And then I get excited and the mouth goes, rah, 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 and the brain's going, oh, it's low. I can't keep up, Nudge. So, yeah. And I do get excited about this because it's a topic I love. I'm really close to my heart. It's very strange that someone could be so obsessed with the historical period, but I really do like the Spanish Civil War because, uh, I don't know, there's so much of a story behind it, even if it is quite horrific in places, but when you sort of read between the lines and read the books and understand where it was coming from, it's, yeah, it's a conflict like, like no other, so... But we'll go on to that because I'm going to do a video saying, telling you how I got into it all, which is going to be really exciting, as you can imagine. But there we go. Go, 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 go to the um, Two Fat Lardies link that I'll put in the description below and print yourself off. I'll print yourself off. Oh, sake, Download a copy of the PDF and have a look at it. Okay, because having the PDF with the army lists in means that you can start building up a force that you want to and you know what figures you need to get and how to build it and what to do 
and we'll touch on that a bit later as well. But the other thing I got here it is flags from Flags of War. Oh, right, let's have a look at it. That's the best way to get a review of these things, isn't it? So, yeah, Spanish of War, you get to wave a flag. Ooh, look at that, my flag. Um, this is for the international brigade that I'm putting together. Everyone wants to do the British Battalion, the 15th, or the Abraham Lincoln. And I'm like, no, I'm going to do Dombrowski. I'm going to do the Poles, the 13th, because it's much more interesting. You know, pick on someone a bit different. They fought in quite a few battles, so they are the top ones. Okay, which is this one here. And the one underneath is... Le Pain, Le Pain, ah, Liberty, Henry William. This I presume is French. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Nothing against my French friends, but I want to do the Poles at the top or the Slavs because they're more exciting. So I got these flags from Flags of War. I think they cost they cost three pounds to get the flags. One pound fifty postage, four pound fifty. I could paint them myself, yes, but there's no way I could do this. This lettering. Absolutely no way, you know, it would look ridiculous if I tried to do it. So it's a much cheaper option and they do look really lovely when you sort of get them onto a pole and stuck onto a figure. So, and it's nice to throw a flag bearer into your units and have more charging forward with him waving his flag to encourage everybody. So flags of war, once again, I will put a link in the description below so you know where to go, but they do have some really nice Spanish civil war flags. Um, for both sides, for the Nationalists and for the Republicans, and for all the political persuasion. That's a hard word thing to say, isn't it? Um, for all the stuff on each side. There you go. So depending on whether you want to be anarchist, Carlist, just normal army, international brigades, foreign legion or army of Africa, depending on how you look at it. There's flags for every persuasion. So there we go. Flags of war. Flags. And the other thing I got all the way from sunny Spain. Hello, Ebro Mirnichas. Well, I like you very much. Sorry. I don't know why I did Speedy Gonzalez there, but you know, I can't speak Spanish. I really should. I'm going to learn it, you know, because it's stupid me like in a conflict in Spain and I can't speak the lingo when a lot of the primary sources are actually written in the language of the country, which is Spanish, and I can't speak it apart from the usual, you know, Buenos Dias, como esta? Una biro, por favor. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shit, isn't it really? So I am going to learn to speak a little bit of Spanish, but I'm not going to use it in any of my videos. You'll be glad to hear. But Ebro Miniatures sent me uh, an order that I sent through. I've got a little list of all the goodies that I bought. Just a few packs, just to sort of, A, to have a look at some of the options that they've got, and B, to sort of try and flesh out the brigade that I'm working on at the moment. But then it gives me options with the ones that I've actually ordered, this little list here, gives me options of actually they're making up some different things for you guys to look at. So I can use the figures that I've got to make um, Foreign Legion, even though they don't do specific Foreign Legion, they do actually do figures that you could use, which is quite nice. Um, Falange, or Falange, which is the Spanish um, nationalist, the Spanish fascist, the Spanish, fascist movement the blue shirts okay so i can do um falange troops in that as well i've got some miliciano so i can do some uh, faicnt militia uh, so you can see those two though i've got lots of little options in there got didn't get any carlists this time i will get some carlists further down the line so we can do those two but i'm concentrating on really doing some sort of simple stuff for around madrid to start with i just i mean i don't particularly want to go back to 36 and do all the militias again but i might do but i want to get some uh, miliciano figures just to paint them up so you can see what they're like and maybe do a painting guide for them so we have a varied selection of things in the bag so what i'm going to do i'm going to mosey on over to the desk and we'll have a good look at what we've got and i can talk you through each one and explain a few things about um what can I say, how to make it a little bit easier for you when you're ordering from the Ebro site, because it is quite confusing. It's in Spanish, it doesn't have a English translation, so you need to know what each of the thing means. Plus, you need to look very carefully at the bodies. Even though it will say Carlists, Assault Guards, National Army, you can use the bodies for any, any option, because basically they're pretty much the same. 
You know, the only thing that's going to be slightly different is maybe the hats they're wearing and sometimes the colors of their uniforms and the things that they have on them. So you can mix and match. And this is the good thing about this range is the fact that you can mix and match the bodies and the heads. And as you will see in a minute, the arms as well, because they are little kits. Yeah. Warning in advance. There are good bits of the review. There are bad bits of the review. Um, I like to be honest when I'm reviewing figures, so um, I will, you know, spout on about how wonderful I think they are because they are really nice figures. I mean, I've got a few that I've painted here. Oh, let me put the little. I oh, don't drop this on the floor. I'm very good at doing that. Here we go. So here's a little handful that I've already painted, and they are lovely figures. They're really nice to paint. For someone that enjoys painting like myself and puts a lot of time of effort into it, they do actually encourage you to do that. They have particularly nice faces. And I often think that the faces actually make figures. And the posters are quite good as well. They're quite dynamic. So, And like I said, you can mix and match and make up different options just by using different heads. So they're my um, start of my Polish International Brigade. So yeah, exciting stuff. So without further ado, like I said, I had to sort of run. I'm waffling again, aren't I? I'm good at this waffling, Lark, as you may have gathered. And I'm shooting all this in one go, which is pretty impressive, Nige. Which is why you get so much waffling bullshit. Let's go across to the desk and we'll tip all the contents out and we'll have a good look at what we're doing. I'll do a little bit of explaining for you and I will go through the good, the bad and the ugly because there is a little bit of each. Without further ado, over to the desk and let's have a look at my Ebro Miniatures purchase. Okay, on the desk, and I've got everything ordered sort of spread out over here in a little pile. So what I'll do, I'll just select some bits from the stack and we'll have a look at them. First off, let's have a look at one of the basic sets that I've ordered. This is um, set 50, Nationalist Infantry Assaulting. Okay, and there's seven figures in the pack. Let's tip them out on here. We're gonna have a look and see what we've got. I'm hoping this is gonna work. What I'll probably do is a selection of sort of video and still footage so you can sort of see what I'm talking about because Appreciate the fact that sometimes the camera doesn't focus very well. So you get your standard little bases, like you get in most of the sort of plasticky kits and things, some warlord and people like that. Absolutely fine. So they're printed, like everything else is actually a 3D printed. They're printed little bases as well, but they work perfectly fine, you know. So you've got the bases if you need them. I don't use them. I tend to use wooden bases from war bases to mount my figures on because I like them better. But there we go, you get bases. And then you get, some of these are already, as you can see, sort of jammed together because I want to get an idea of what I had in the pack. So I pop them there like that. So there's seven bodies, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And as you can see from the bodies, I think see that okay. They have no arms, don't have any heads either. Okay. What you get is a selection of arms that you can then glue onto the bodies. Now, certain arms go on certain bodies. You can mix and match them a little bit, but it does require a little bit of filling on your part if you do, as I discovered. I did sort of, with the first set that I got, I glued them together without thinking too much and then thought, ooh, there's a few gaps here. So I filled them in with putty. Easy to do. You don't have to, but it does give you more variation if you want it. So each body, set of arms, okay? Certain arm sets go with certain bodies. So you end up with quite nice dynamic little poses. And then depending on what you want to do, you stick a head on. Okay, this little guy here, Nationalist Infantry. Okay, so they're Franco's lot. So basically you can stick a tubia helmet on it, a Spanish tin helmet head on there. You could stick one with an Isabellino cap with a little tassel on the front. Or if you wanted to, you could put an Adrian helmet on it or pass a Montana helmet on it and actually use it as Republican infantry because really they're basically the same. You know, he's got Grenadero trousers on. So they're the ones that sort of tighten down to the ankles and then strap underneath whatever he's got on his feet. And he's got your standard Spanish kit, um, webbing kit. So he's got the ammo pouches, little bag, the bayonet on the side there. 
his shirt he's tucked it into his trousers i know this is all really random but it's quite important when you look at these little figures his shirt is tucked into his trousers so you could theoretically use him for spanish foreign legion which is what i'm going to do i'm going to paint one of these up as spanish foreign legion and see what they come out like because i think they're perfectly usable people will say he hasn't got the mills pattern webbing like he's supposed to have but they came across from africa the first sort of few banderas would have had the standard kit but when they got to spain they would have been supplied with anything that was at hand so the later banderas would have had probably spanish kit so he's perfectly okay having the spanish webbing kit all of a sudden i've got some legionarios which is really quite nice because they match with the figures that i've already got whereas the bandera ones no it's a bandera oh, i've forgotten the name of the damn company honestly nige you are rubbish baraka miniatures figures that i've got for the foreign legion don't actually fit in with the Ebra ones because they're too small. So there we go. So you get enough arms to match with the figures. Nominally, you would. Okay. I have in this occasion got... No, I haven't actually. I lie. I haven't got enough arm sets to match. I do have a set here of arms here for a standard bearer. Which is okay if you want a standard bear, I suppose. But these arms are bare. They've got no shirt sleeves on. So they're absolutely useless to go with the ones that I've got. So, whoops, Ebro, that's not great. I would suggest you look at what you're including with these sets and make sure that you don't get these. I would offer these arms as a separate option for standard bearers and don't throw them into the packs because... Not everybody wants flags in the units and basically you're losing a figure out of the seven that you've got because you don't have an arm set for him. So, yeah, they are lovely figures, but there's a gripe. Don't like gripes, but there is one. You also get lots of little tiny bits of equipment, pouches, water bottles, bits and pieces. This one here, I think... I'll, I'll take a still photo, but I think that's printed too small. That's meant to be a water bottle and like a canister type Lafitte grenade, the French grenades that they had. That should be bigger than that. I think that's printed to the wrong size. But. So there we go, bodies and arms, but I also ordered some heads because you need to order the heads separately. So you want to think about exactly what headsets you want to go with the figures that you're ordering, which is why I said at the start of this video, way back before I got all waffly, that downloading the Espana Chain of Command supplement is probably a good idea to work out exactly what army you want to build, then you'll know exactly what you're ordering, okay? So I've basically got Miliciano heads because I've got some militia figures coming up. Uh, Casca Trubia, which is Trubia helmets, which is the Nationalist infantry used. All sides use them, in fact. You could get away with those with loads of different figures. Um, these are Paso Montana hats for the Republicans. I'm going to go back to those later because there's a problem. And these are Isabelina hats, which are the ones with the little tassel hanging down the front. So theoretically, I could take a... Wow, well, if I can get one out, any old head will do. An Isabelina hat, one of these figures, pop it on, and there we go. There he is, Nationalist Army or Spanish Foreign Legion. Or, here we go again, you could actually paint him up in a blue shirt with a blue hat as Falange, as the uh, Spanish fascist party troops, because they had their own combat units as well. So one little figure, three little options straight away. You've got Nationalist Army, Foreign Legion, Falange. Okay. Take that head off. And I'm not sure one of these is going to fit because unfortunately there's something wrong with these heads. They don't have the dip in them like the other heads have. But if you were to stick that head on, oh, it does work. It's not too bad. It's a bit sort of stalky necks, but there we go. The Paso Montana hat on that body, and all of a sudden you've got Republican infantrymen from the EPR, the Republican Army, or from international brigades. So, like I said, the options are endless, and there are lots of heads to choose from. There's nothing to stop you putting a Carlis head on this and use it as a Carlis requete. Requete, sorry. I'm going to improve my Spanish pronunciations of all of these. But they are great little figures. They do take a little bit of work. 
Okay, and I think this is where their downfall is going to be, is the fact that they do require some work. They do require you putting the arms on. They do require you to stick the heads on. And, you know, sometimes it's going to be a bit beyond a few people. With the first set that I bought, I found that the resin was really quite brittle. And then the process of putting the arms on, I broke a few bits. But they seem to have changed the resin. And this is a lot more flexible which is quite nice because it makes it a lot easier to bend them and get them on. You do end up, well, here we go, floppy bayonets. Oh, my days. Nobody wants a floppy bayonet. So you will be straightening them out a little bit, but it does mean that they don't snap off because I had an awful lot of my bayonets snap off on the first batch that I had. So well done, Ebro, for changing the resin. It is much nicer. Um, I don't know what it's going to paint up like, but we'll find out. But what I'll do... We'll have a look at a few other packs and then we'll stick a few of these together. We can have a look at what variations we've got. Okay, so let me put this lot away and I'll tip out another pack and you have a look at those two. Okay, okay. next on the hit list, we have some Milicianos. Milicianos, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that word, but it's militia walking, basically. <laughs> okay, so we'll tip them out. And same again, it's that big jumble pile of stuff. Uh, the bases that I'm not gonna use because I like my wooden ones, put them over there. And you get one, two, three. There was supposed to be four figures in here, but there was a bit of confusion on the packing, I think, at the other end. I've got five, but one of these figures comes out of one of the other packs. So, yeah, confusing. Militia walking. Classic, classic, classic Spanish militia men from the early part of the war. Okay. So, the ones you sort of see in pictures hanging off the back of lorries, dressed in this all everyday clothes or in boiler suits with little four and a half hats in and black and red if they're anarchists all in red if they're poom you know they're great lovely little figures once again great variety but there's going to be a butt in this one in a minute let's have a look at them first before i go butting okay so here we go here's one of the guys he's got his bib and brace overalls on He's clutching a submachine gun, which for the militias would probably be a heavy weapon, you know, of sorts. His arms have dropped a little bit, but... Oh. Well, you get the German idea. I tell you what, let's take his arms off so we can have a better look at his body. So there we go. He's got, like I said, he's got the... Bib and Brace overalls on. Okay, which would be in a fetching shade of blue with a shirt underneath and he had those arms on so once again the arms will go with certain figures so you need to sort of have a look and see what they've got it will serve purpose for any militia unit so he could be poom he could be uh, fai or the anarchists he could be socialist militia he could be anything you couldn't really i suppose you could get away with using them for uh, uh the carlists but they didn't really sort of tend to turn them bib and brace ovals but some of the guys where they've got the all-in-one sort of overalls on. This one is actually in trousers and a vest. You could use him for a multitude of sins as well. Or this guy where he's in the full uh, mono suit, which is like a boiler suit. But then again, you could get away with painting that as trousers and a shirt. You could stick a Requete head on him, a Carlist head on him and call him a Carlist. You could stick an Isabellina on him, call him a Falange, Falange. You could stick a, a Republican head on him, call him um, Republican Infantryman. It's the variations. This is the thing with them. You can get so much variety out of them, but it does take a little bit of work. Okay, what we'll do is we'll grab a head. I'll tell you what, we'll grab two heads. We'll grab, not that one. <laughs> we'll grab the Tribute Helmets and we'll grab the Militia four and a half hats and you can see what I'm talking about so what we'll do is we'll take the bog standard head out we'll give him a standard militia hat there we go I hope the head will stay on there we go so here he is with a normal sort of anarchist head on and you can paint him whatever sort of unit he belongs to which political persuasion he is so you could paint that hat red and have it as poom or the socialists black and red and have them as f-a-i-c-n-t anarchists so yeah again bit of variety 
There's actually 10 different heads in that bag. So you've got 10 variations on a theme anyway with 10 different heads and you can move the angle slightly. You could pop a head with a Trubia helmet on it. So he's a slightly better equipped militia man. He's managed to get hold of a hat and then you can paint your wet leather. Oh God, Nigel. You can paint the initials of his um, unit that belongs to across the front of his helmet. So you could put Poom on it or FAI. You'll see later on when I paint some of these, but I, I do that sort of thing with them so you can see what I'm talking about. But there he is again. So you've got a couple of variations there straight away. This is the great thing about these figures that you can do that. I know, I'll harp on about it. So I've been nice. Now it's time to be nasty. So you get lots of separate sets of arms. And on this occasion, I've got more than enough arms to do what I want to do, which is quite nice. So I've got, there was only four figures in this pack. Okay, but I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sets of arms, which is great because it gives me lots of different options. Here's where the oh dear comes in. The oh dear comes in because there are two sets of arms that I simply can't use for this Militiaman set. And that's these two here. If you can see those in focus. These are DP-28 light machine guns supplied by the Soviet Union to the Republican Army. The militia never had them. They would never have been issued this kit because this is modern kit that would have gone straight to the Republican um, Popular Army or to the International Brigades. Would never have gone to the militia. If the militia were being equipped with a light machine, they would have had the model 1922 Hotchkiss, which was the standard arm for the Spanish Army at the time, would have been given to them out of reserves. They may have been able to get their hands on some other bits and pieces, maybe show shats or. Um, Possibly Lewis guns, there were a few of those about as well, but they would never have had the DP-28. So Airbro, once again, don't put these in with the militia because they're the wrong piece of equipment. It's great to have them as spares for other things, but you can't use them, so. But that's the only gripe. Apart from that, they're great again. Lovely little set of figures. I'm not gonna go through every single one that I got because that'll take forever. Just want to give you a little taster of what they're like. Okay, so we pop those back in their bag and we'll get another bag out. Okay, just going to throw one last little set out. No, I'm not. I'm going to throw a few more than the last little set out. Set 30. I love this set. It's uh, a radio operator, a medic, and basically an NCO more than anything else. So, But it's a really lovely little set to add flavour again to games. So... Bases once more, no idea why I've got four, because there's only, th oh, I should have four. I'm, thinking about I'm, I'm missing somebody. Urgh. Okay, um, I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> missing a figure, I thought this was a three figure set, but it's a four figure set. Basically what it is, it's a radio operator, an NCO and a medic, and they're great. You can use them for either side, you know, whatever head you decide to stick on. But what I love about it is the little guy with the telephone it's just fabulous. He's sort of sitting on a box with the phone in front of him and he's got the receiver up to his ear and the other hand is sort of, it's gonna be held up to his, what I'll do is I'll take the picture from the website and put it on here so you can see. Okay the, other, okay, the other hand is sort of up to his ear so he's got his finger in his ear trying to say, I can't hear you, radio or telephoning through because radios were, yeah, mm, very limited in this sort of period. And the medic is sort of running forwards full tilt with his hand holding his, his um, tin out on, with his other hand holding his bag. He's got the big old red cross on his bag as well. And the NCO is sort of kneeling and clutching his rifle, pointing, you know, to sort of say over there and relaying stuff back to the radio operator. I don't know what the fourth figure was because I don't appear to have got him. So I'm going to have to drop the message to Ebro and say, where is he? But I really love this little set. I think it's a great little set of figures to add a little bit of personality to um, an army. And I'll probably base them up, two of the guys together, and then another one separately. And I might sort of try and rig a figure up holding a map or something too. We'll have a look at all of them, stuff it. Let's have a look at the whole lot, Nige. So we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. This one here is, he's a Carlist sniper, but you, you could, uh, same again, stick any head on and you can use him for either side. And what we'll do, we'll pop up the image from the website again. And you can see. But 
but he's lovely. Um, I did have a little problem with the guy with the binoculars. Those, they were joined together at the binoculars, but they did sort of snap. They're quite fragile, but it doesn't matter because when you put them in the figure's armholes, it does then um, go together in the middle. I love this little figure. He's got submachine gun on one side and a grenade stuck in his belt on the other. That's a really great little touch. That's lovely. Really like that. And because they are printed, the sort of straps away from the... Oh, let's get him closer. See if we can actually see that. The strap for the gun is away from his body. You can sort of see air between the two. And that grenade really does look like it's sort of tucked into his belt. There's no sort of clear... Look at it. Look at it. Come on. It's just... Oh. I've fallen in love with printed figures. I never thought I would ever do this, but when they're good, like this, they really are bloody amazing. You know, because the detail on this little figure is superb. I'm going to love painting him. He's going to be full of character. He's going to do lots of different things. He's probably been NCO. He might be with a machine gun team. He might be with his sniping partner. But he's just a really nice little figure. Let's grab another bag. Oh, quickly, Nige, put him in there. Only just enough arms in this one to do the two guys. But nah, I don't care. That's fine. You know, I don't expect freebies all the time. Carlis with show shats. They're not going to be Carlis with show shats. I just like the set because I like the trousers and boots and things they had on. But, oh, yes. Three different variations on a theme. All oh, guys with the wonderful show shat. Machine rifle, for want of a better description. Light machine gun, squad assault weapon. Steaming pile of poo, if you actually were equipped with one of these, because they were nicknamed as sloshers by the international brigades because they were so bad, so bad. They were heavy, unreliable, they jammed, they were chucked away in numbers because they were rubbish. And yeah, the Republic bought loads of them because other armies around the world were quite keen to get rid of them because they are crap. <laughs> But you can equip your units with them, so of course I've got to do that, haven't I? Got to give them some show shots to give them a bit of a life support, even though they are complete and utter garbage. So you get three variations on a theme. Two guys sort of, one guy walking, one guy running, one guy kneeling. Three sets of show set arms. Each of the arms goes with an individual body, and then you get a few little bits and bobs to put on if you want to, sort of little bags and a water bottle just to sort of add to the figures to personalize them a bit they're great you know just to add a bit more variety to my poor international brigades unit and i may even throw them into some other ones as well um like i was saying earlier on with the uh, militias i doubt they would have got their hands on them because they didn't sort of come through till later on but you can always equip a poor militia unit with a show shot as well just to give them a bit of support <laughs> although it's not going to be much because you need to put rules in i think there's rules in the um band the Spanish supplement to serve for show shats jamming on you, which is what they did on a regular basis. So I've got a Valera mortar, 50 mil mortar, because these come as options that you have to have. Same again, nice big base to put them on if you want to. Two, I don't know why I've got two individual bases, but I've got a big wooden base I'll put them on, so I won't use the bases again. But you've got two little guys. One guy who appears to be in a vest who's the mortar firing man. you got to be careful here, Nige. But he's basically firing the mortar, and then you've got another sort of crewman to go with him kneeling next to it. And you could easily make up a little ammo box to have laying next to them with some mortar shells in, or that would have been a nice addition to this. But hey, I'm not complaining. The problem you have once again is that the, all the variations of this have one guy in a vest and one guy not. Ebro, please do one where they're both not in vests. I'm not sure if you do already, I'll have to have a look, but yeah, it will be much better. There's just more, more choice, okay? Pop them back in there. And a lot of the actual units in Espanya needing to have Valero mortars, 50 mil mortars, um, as standard things in units. We need to have a bit of variety on that one. And last of all, these are Assault Guards walking. 
<laughs> and once again, it is just it's, it was a set of three. This is the set where the extra figure from this set end up with the militia men. Doesn't matter. I know he's there. And again, I bought them for variations um, because they've got their trousers sort of tucked in. Okay, I can actually have them sort of walking forwards. And he shouldn't really have those arms. He needs to have the submachine gun arms because he's got the ammunition pouch for the submachine gun. So I've got the wrong arms on that one, but never mind. There we go. He should have those arms really. So he's got the submachine gun. Once again, there were three figures in this set. And I got one two, three, four, five, six sets of arms, two DPs again, which you don't really need. One DP would be enough. You know, you don't want loads of those. I suppose if you want different options, it might be nice. And then again, once, uh, put that arm out of the way, a nice little swag pile of bits and bobs again, okay, which includes a teeny tiny grenade. But they are really lovely, lovely little figures. I know I spouted endlessly about them. Um, yeah, the problems you're going to have, if you're not a model maker, you may struggle gluing them together. You may find them too fiddly. Um, if you like a bit of a challenge, they're great for that. In fact, I mean, they're not that challenging. I mean, really, to be honest, I'm saying they're a challenge, but they're not. They really are quite easy to put together. So yeah, ignore me when I'm going on about that because they're not that difficult. With the new resin that's more flexible, they are easy to sort of glue together. Last but not least, a mistake okay I've made a mistake ordering this I should have really inquired about how big it was and got the measurements first before I ordered it because it simply doesn't fit you know what I'm like with scale this um, Bill Bow armored car is the wrong scale it's too small it's a lovely little model and it goes together really well and it's Quite nicely cast, there's a few like little bits they haven't cleaned off, but that don't matter because I can do that. It's a bit battered than that around the sort of air intakes on the engine and things. They're all a bit battered. The front grid is a bit battered as well, but I might be able to straighten it out. The thing that makes me realise that it is the wrong scale is the size of the commander figure that I've got with it. I think it must be a misprint because he is tiny. He's tiny. He's about 170 seconds scale. So he's too small, no use to me whatsoever. This isn't 170 second scale. I do have a 170 second scale uh, Bilbao, so I know how big they are. This is about 156th scale. It doesn't match with the Ebro figures. It's too small, okay. This is based on a Ford truck chassis, okay. Let me grab me old favorite. This is the one I use for comparing the scale. This is the BA6 armor car. This is also based on a Ford truck chassis. It's the one with the sort of double axle on the back, but the wheelbase is still the same. So it's not too bad. It sort of looks the right length, but it's not. It's way too short because that would be the length of the truck flatbed. Uh, That'll be the length of the truck chassis. So the Bill Bower should be this sort of long. It's not. It's a good couple of centimeters short. It's not wide enough either. I've got one and I've scaled it out so I know. So learn for me is when buying vehicles, ask how big they are. Can you give me the dimensions? And then I know what scale they are. Because the good thing with Ebro is, you can actually say to them, can you print that out? A bit bigger for me please because they're printed they can do that which is good so in a way yeah i should have inquired about it first it's a learn for me but it's not too bad because i can work out exactly how big it wants to be now that i know how big the model is i can go back to ebro and say could you print another one out for me and could you print it this much bigger could you print it 110 percent could you print it 120 percent so it's bigger and it fits in with what i have so we have that option to do. So that is good. Yeah, my mistake, but there you go. It's a learn. Apart from that, really satisfied with what I got. Apart from the few odd things that I said, the fact that you've got that bare set of arms of the standard bearer pole that are no use, too many DP light machine guns, and they need to put a bit of variation in. Apart from that, they're great. So 
let's go finish this one off. There we go. Perhaps not the best review in the world. I'm really sorry. but <laughs> I did ramble quite a lot and I was trying desperately to get you to sort of see. And my desk setup isn't great. I really do have to sort of get something sorted here because it doesn't work. Um, I do know I haven't cleared my space and I do need to clear my space so I can set up better for filming. But I'm so sort of enthusiastic about getting things onto my channel that, yeah. I haven't really thought it through, but we will do. When I get around to actually sort of showing you the figures and building them and painting them, I will actually have a better setup. I've figured out how to rig it up so it works better and I will just clean the crap off so I've got more room to work. But there we go, Ebro miniatures. Um, what can I say? Yeah, they are very, very good figures. I know I like the figures. I don't have any problem with kits because I've been a model maker um, for most of my adult life. I love making models, so to me, it's not a challenge at all. Um, I challenge myself a bit more trying to sort of chop and change the arms about and see if I can get some different variations on it. Um, the best feature about them is the fact that there is so much variety. The fact that you've got the different sets of arms, the different bodies, the different heads. You really can mix and match and come up with a really good varied force for the Spanish Civil War, whatever army you decide to do. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of thinking. Um, like I was trying to point out in the review is have a look at the bodies and make sure because they are all different okay even though it looks like they've got a mono suit on you know it could just be like a pair of trousers and a shirt tucked in and you can paint them up like that and then stick a different head and all of a sudden you've got a different option and don't go along with sort of thinking oh it's going to be all uniformed and things like that because it isn't the uniform forces that are there will be uniform to a certain extent, but you can still get away with changing things. To so whereas I'd say do the popular army, the Republican popular army, they're gonna be uniform to a certain extent, but then again, the colors are gonna be different, so you can get away with doing some faded stuff. They may have different helmets, they may have got older Adrians, they may have been given Czech helmets, they may have just have Trubia helmets on. Everything's different and you can mix and match, you know. Ebro, one thing you do need to do is some hats with berets on because quite a few of the international brigades had berets, so it might be nice to get some a headset with actual berets. Not the Carlist ones with the dangly tassel, but just bare normal berets because that gives a few more variations for the international brigade again. I know you've got them down on your um, list on your website as coming, but you know, yeah, make sure you include those in there. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, like I said, there are a few bugbears. Um, I didn't like the fact that I've got that set of bare arms and I've got a militia body that I can't really use. I can because I've got lots of spare arms in the other sets, but it's a case of trying to get a set of arms that match without me having to do too much work. I don't mind doing a bit of work, so that's not too bad. And the plethora of DP-28 machine guns that I've got, there's a lot of those and I wouldn't have thought there would have been that many in existence. Certainly if you're doing um, International Brigade or if you're doing the Popular Army, they would have had them because they were equipped with those. But if you're going to be doing things like militias, then they probably wouldn't have had them. So, yeah, don't put them in. Try and include something different. You can get different sets. You've got the Maxim Tokarev as a set, which is another light machine gun that was supplied um, by Stalin and the Soviet Union to uh, the Republican Army. But it'd be nice to get some model 1922 Hotchkiss machine guns in there, which is a standard um, light machine gun for the Spanish Peninsula Army before the war. And it might be nice to chuck in a few things like Lewis guns because they were about, you know, just to give a bit of variety. I know later on you're gonna do Italian, so we're gonna get things like the Braders and the Fiat Revellis, which um, some of the nationalist units were equipped with. So that'd be nice. Bit of a variation on the theme, but yeah, to make the militias more usable, give us the Model 1922 Hotchkiss, that would be great, okay. Although, with militias, I would say the likelihood of having the LMG is probably not that high. They're more likely to have the HMG Hotchkiss instead, which you can readily get from um, Ebro. So, yeah, all in all, would I say buy them? Yes, with the caveat saying that if you are not that skilled or confident in putting together kits, they may not be the range for you. If you've got someone that can stick things together for you, then yeah, get them because they are really, really nice and they are a joy to paint as well because they are so well detailed, because the faces are so lovely. Once you've got them stuck together, once you've got them undercoat and you start painting them and you do sort of get lost in them and think, great, and you start adding that personality, 
I've taken far too long to paint mine, the ones that I've got painted, because I really got into painting them and they are full of character. And you can see that when the few pictures that I've got, the painted ones that I popped up, they're wonderful, really, really lovely figures. But um, like I say, uh, it's horses for courses. They may not be the figures for you, but I would suggest perhaps getting a couple of packs, uh, a set of heads, having a fiddle and see what you think. Um, I ordered mine directly from Spain. There was no UK provider. I don't think there's an American provider either, but I had no issues at all. They do take a little while to come through because um, it is a company that's run as a sideline by the gentleman that does it. Um, so he obviously sort of packing and printing figures and, and send them out as and when he's got the time. Mine took a couple of weeks to come through. To me, that's not bad. They came from Spain and I had no problems getting them in the UK. They came in a padded envelope, perhaps not the best thing to put them in, but they don't seem to have suffered on the journey at all. So yeah, go to Ebro Miniatures, go to the website, have a good look through, decide what you want and order some packs and away you go. Have some fun, you know? Okay, so that's me done. Like I said, not the great review, but hopefully you'll get an idea of what the figures are like with this and the one that I put up previously, covering a few little options too. And next time, I don't know, maybe the first installment of the T26 saga, or it may be me showing how to paint a figure because I'm gonna do that as well. Lots of different things going on, so tune in next time. If you're enjoying the content on here, please, Remember to subscribe, okay? And if you want to know when I put a video up, if you hit the bell, it notifies you and says, Bing, no, I just put a video up and then you can just go through. The more subscribers I get, the better it is for my little channel because then I get to go out to more people, more people get to watch because then YouTube will recommend it. Thank you for everybody who's taken the time to pop comments on and like the previous videos. It's really quite heartwarming to see that people are enjoying it and I will keep churning out content. God knows what it will be like, but yeah, hopefully once I get myself sorted and clear this lot away and have a desk that I can work on, the quality will get better. Until next time, adios. Hasta mañana, or something like that. Take care, everyone.